Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the not start of the campaign of TNO, the Lassies of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Welsh Assembly Lover, but a Cymru victory, a Cymru gawk victory. Shh, I can't hear the radio. As his children bumble around the room, his wife frantically attempts to control them. Gail Donson leans closer towards the radio just as the speaker speaks. He fiddles with the dials in the hands, rough and callous from years of manual labor until the static recedes and the speaker's voice finally becomes understandable. Emery Thomas is set to become Wales' second prime minister after Cymru Gox or goes near a victory against the Unionist Party in the elections. Many attributing this win to the Gog's promises of increased welfare benefits and improved workers' rights including higher minimum wages and a promise to improve working conditions of position well liked by many voters. Only time can tell whether or not these promises will be fulfilled. Oh, thank God, Gail breathes relieved. You hear that, dear? He calls to his wife, who has been at this point successfully wrang wrangling the children. Everything will be fine. They're raising the minimum wages. We can get out of this part of town and move somewhere nicer. You really think so? I know so. So we're playing as social democratic Wales because, well, some guy wants me to. So, go victory. Also, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this stuff right. I'm not. I don't think I'm Welsh. I don't think I am. So I'm going to screw up the pronunciations. The workers of Wales have spoken, and the wish is clear: idealism, socialism, and democracy. The uncaring and distant capitals are pl uh, played. Uh, Cymru, Cymru, and the Unionist Tory traitors have lost their sway. Their lies and corruption exposed for all to see. Cymru Go, once but a splinter faction of the Plaid, or Plaid, has now been entrusted with the goal most noble. Restoration of the Welshman's faith in their own government and the establishment of democratic socialism in Wales. In face of the world, gears of change. Um, political reform. I want to do the gears of change first for hundreds of years. Wales is a relative backward in the economical sphere. Great progress was made during the Industrial Revolution, but the cost of the said progress was great. The common work was left mostly destitute, and although the situation improved near the turn of the century, Plague Cymru's uh, capitalist ways have cut the people of Wales from achieving true prosperity, but not anymore. The workers will be protected, and Wales will prosper no matter what. Oh, quite a bit of political power here. We're still building some roads because we like roads on occasion. And we are getting worse poverty rate, which is not good. We have the national spirits, Welsh cultural revolution. We also have a free Wales army, not good. And then we have the bountiful earth, which the coal's bringing us in 0 0.05 billion, which is not enough. But the lifeblood of the nation. In order to ensure continued economic prosperity and the stability of the republic, the strategic industries of our nation are to be nationalized and reorganized into centrally, centrally controlled and regulated businesses, producing goods explicitly with the greater societal good instead of the interest of private capital. The government seeks to guarantee employment and fair compensation for the Welsh laborers through preventing potential mine closures or the acquisition of Welsh national or Welsh natural and industrial wealth by foreign capital. The ind industrial spheres marked for nationalization are coal and iron mining, steel and energy and vehicle production, as well as railroad transport and defense industry. Owners of companies operating the above mentioned sectors will be granted a just recompense by the government. Arthur Holner put down the legislation and smoked at Thomas and Williams. Pretty nice, eh? Wrote it myself. No longer the mercy of industrialists. Come re go. Victory. The people of Wales have spoken. Tired of the autocratic and capitalist ways of the played Cymru, the working men and women of the Republic cho chose a democratic and socialist Cymru Gah to lead them through the disturbing time. Celebrations are being held nationwide by socialist voters, and electors and party members alike. The new government knows, however, that this is not the end of the struggles for socialism in Wales. Plague Cymru is sure to discredit the splinters on every uh, turn, and the specter of fascism already looming over the entirety of the Isles is present domestically in the forms of the Free Wales Army. Despite all these problems, Prime Minister Emery Thomas is confident in his and his go government's ability to weather the storm and build a new, more equal, just Wales, for the benefit and happiness of all, a new order in the land of coal and steel. While we cannot achieve socialism overnight, we can start the transformation of the Welsh economy by nationalizing some of the most key industries and reorienting them to serve the Welsh people first, and market interests second. Whilst we will endure to the working class, we can expect a fair bit of resistance from the capitalist elites and some of our more free market supporting citizens. Promote the idea of nationalization. Increase the debt? That's okay. Industrial factories? We just need, we need more support, so. The Assyria Crisis? Yes. A bright spot indeed. So, um, national steel mills. Growth will go down. Let's see if we can do all this stuff. So, can we just spam this, I guess? Oh, there we go. National Industrial Factories. Um, okay, this all hurts us quite a bit. Infrastructure, and this one gets what? Here's the state GDP. Let's go, we'll do it. Do it again. So, we get away. Actually, I probably should not spend all my PP, but whatever. Um, low minimum wage with acceptable minimum wage, acceptable regulations. More growth, but a little more inflation. The trap which many capitalist economies fall into is one of growth for the sake of growth. Economic progress benefiting only the strong and the rich while leaving behind the toilers who make said progress possible. This happened in Wales too, but it will no longer continue. Better wages, regulations, and improved working conditions will make for just recompense for the hard work of our people. 
I, I don't like better minimum wage just because it, were, it gets rid of the max number of buildings in a state, which is not good. But it does help out of poverty, which is also very, very good. We get more industrial expertise. It's going to cost more, though. Um, so that decreases minimum wage, workplace safety, but more growth, somewhat. So it's definitely a give and take here. And we get almost roughly two political power a day. Right now, let's see. We have a yearly deficit, which is not terrible. Our growth is actually extraordinarily bad, though. So we don't like that. Um, now we went down to negative 3%. Jesus Christ. I hate inflation. Turning the gears. Comrades and countrymen. The electoral platform of a party always called for the pursuit of one incredibly important goal, the institution of socialism in our dear Wales. Well, this is a very contentious topic, one that is sure to cause emotional discussion and raise questions about the exact form and way of implementation of this new system. Some even say that reforms will lead to dictatorship, poverty, and strife, but I ask this of you, dear Welshmen. Uh, do not listen to these voices of discontent. I will not deceive you, however. The way towards our new homeland will be long and sometimes arduous, but our values of democracy, liberty, and equality will lead us, and the Cymru will all build a beautiful, be, build, be beautiful indeed. It would be a land of prosperity and opportunity, liberty and solidarity, all intertwined and create the wheels of our dreams. We will all labor together, comrades, and we will reap the fruits of our labor, and when the work is done, we will look back at the wonders we have built and rejoice, for we have made our land great. <clears throat> Emory Thomas stepped away from the microphone and looked around the assembly building. Thundering applause filled the hall, and he felt the terrible chains of stress breaking. In that instant, he was overjoyed and wholly focused on the task ahead, so focused. In fact, he did not see the disgusted and irritated faces of his opponents, nor did he pick up on their half-hearted applause. Even if he did, however, it would not matter to him, for he had the support of the people, and that's all that he needed. We should be forever united in friendship and labor. Hey, wow, we're at 1% more growth. Wow. That's pretty good. Um, Let's see, which one is this? I want more GDP. I like that, but... <clears throat> Southern Wales, Northern Wales. Well, I'm just looking at resources... So in the wells is not bad to do. Transportation lines, might as well. Reverse previous restrictions. We gain more political power, which I do like. Um, the Plague Cymru was founded on the noble ideas of democracy and freedom for the peoples of Wales, but they failed to uphold them after we gained or, uh, regained our long awaited independence. The ways became more and more authoritarian, and plain disregard for the will and desires of the people could be seen. Restrictions were placed upon Welsh political life, ones that spit in the face of the ideals upon which our nation was founded. They must be reversed so that freedom, true freedom, may return to Wales. And we also have a cup of coffee. Not, not Oh, never mind. Not coffee, but we have a cup of tea here. Keep us nice and warm. So now we're only at negative 1.8%, which is not great. But it's better than negative 3%. And we're actually fair, which is actually not bad. I think we were intermediate earlier, but, you know, with everything going on, it's not going great. So, yeah. More debt, that's okay. Right? That's just but a number, right? And then Welsh Broadcasting Channel, Welsh Protection Bills, work ending working at toil. Um, hmm. New face of the world. Helping Halda content? Keeping him content. Going to political reform. Keeping the scum out. Deal with Julian's fanatics. What political reform? The previous government's administration has left behind a legacy of authoritarianism and repression and things we cannot and will not tolerate. Sweeping reforms in the political sphere are required in order to ensure the stability and prosperity of our republic. And keep this come out. I think we're going to do a fair democracy. So if you want to do this, please go ahead. But a fair democracy. Our young nation was built on the virtues of democracy and political plurality. Virtues that are worth protecting. <clears throat> While we do not agree with the capitalists, reactionaries, and unionists that exist in our society, they still are. Citizens of our Wales, members of our dem democratic society, our common values must be promoted and protected. Welsh resources. Our land is blessed with bountiful quantities of various resources, many of which are the mainstays of an industrialized economy. Extraction of these resources give our nation a position otherwise impossible to achieve for a country of our size, but there are many deposits which have not been touched by human hands. Finally, extracting these riches will immensely help our economy. So right now we're still negative, well, less than 0.1%. Deficit's not good. You know, pretty normal. Um, I don't know. More GDP? Yeah. It's gonna hurt us for a little bit, but you know what? Of Northern Wales? Growth is not good, but it is what it is. A fair democracy. Uh, endorse leftist parties. Deal with Julian's fanatics. As much as I want to do this one. Endorse leftist parties. Great injustices were made in the previous years concerning the treatment of our fellow socialists and other leftists, all in the name of ensuring stability and fighting the red menace. These explanations are ridiculous, of course, and are simply excuses for the power hungry oligarchs. Dishonest their enemies. Now as the tables have turned, so as the government stands towards leftism, our comrades must be supported and endorsed so that the workers have their representation in politics. Yeah, still not good. Um, we're fresh off of the presses, too. Actually, fresh off the presses. Ooh, wow. That's a major lag. 1% increase in growth. Um, inflation is not that high, 
to want a 20% reduction of basic or base inflation rate up to 3% total reduction. Eh, 3%, 1% lower. Eh, let's keep it where we're at for now. Just for now, at the very least. Uh, power rate, you know, it's, it's definitely gone better than where it is. I've never done power things up or fight poverty, really, so. It is what it is. But we got better guns. Who needs a good economy when you got better guns? Also, with the. Oh, quite. Oh, quite. Um, with the final end goal of Wales trying to unify. Usually resisting or unifying with the English. So we're probably going to have to cheat for that. But, you know, it is what it is. I've done this. I've done this sort of before, but, you know, whatever. Heavy industry. Rapid industrialization in the 19th and early 20th centuries led to a population boom and a staggering increase in wealth. But. It was distributed unequally, and many regions of Wales, especially in the northern and eastern regions of the country, are predominantly rural and poor. Establishing new industrial centers will help us realize their true potential. Digging out more coal. Ooh, yes, please. Coal is Wales' life and death, a source of employment for many, and a cause of death for many others. Be it from the pollution it produces or calamities like the Aberfan disaster. As much as we would prefer to use clean and more efficient resources, it's the most economically viable right now, and if we wish to expand the economy, we would expand the coal mines as well. A proper health and safety regulation should take care of most of the risks, shouldn't it? Who knows, maybe someday we'll have better alternatives. Bigger steel mills. I think that'd be really cool to get. Um, steel is the arguably the most important resource in the world, used for everything from kitchen utensils through buildings up to tanks, cars, and airplanes, thankfully. Our rich coal and iron reserves allow us to produce great quantities of it. All we need now is an expansion of our existing and building of new steel mills, and the Welsh stamp of approval. Since we're, we lack the cheap workforce and sheer size of the country, such as Germany or the USA, we cannot prioritize quantity over quality. Instead, we must focus on producing only the finest of goods and materials in order to secure a spot in the international market. And for that, we need strict quality assurance. More political power, nice. And more growth. And Welsh Broadcasting Channel. The modern inventions of TV and radio have a relatively small community of users in our country, with newspapers being the primary source of news for the common Welshman. Many people, however, know good source of news. Relying on sensationalist tabloid-like publications, to remedy this, we need to create a state-owned, free and fair free-to-air broadcasting channel, filled with only the freshest news and best entertainment. International solidarity. Comrades and countrymen, thank you for entrusting us with the future of our dear Wales. You can be rest assured that we will not fall this time, or fail this time, uh, or fail this trust. We will work tirelessly day and night to live up to your expectations. We will build socialism in Wales, and by doing so, we will create a just and free home for our people. But this cause is greater than a party, greater than Wales as a whole. All across the world, socialists of all stripes and colors struggle in the cause of the better of their homelands. Every single person in political party that shares their commitment to socialism and the virtues it entails. Justice, peace, equality, freedom, and democracy will have our full and unwavering support. Our country may be small, but the values we hold dear are great indeed. The Prime Minister, uh, Emery Thomas, held a televised address to the nation today, thanking his electorate and endorsing socialist and social democratic parties across the world. The reception has been overwhelmingly positive among the Cymru electorate. While well, played Cymru, officials have called the speech full of populist drivel, disconnect from reality, and dominated by ridiculous posturing. Support for the Cymru go, however, remains at an all-time high. Solidarity and cooperation are what this role needs right now. Welsh Working Protection Bill Our government has, after many discussions, consultations, and opinion surveys, drafted the Welsh Workers' Protection Bill, which will guarantee and expand the rights and privileges of the working class of Wales. One official proposition of the WWPB sure to start a lively debate in the Assembly and attract criticism from the played Cymru. It must simply be done for it will serve as a major step stone in the struggle for workers' rights in good old Wales. As we were trying to get more research speed, but also at this point now, Happy New Year, it's 1964. <clears throat> Poverty rate change is now 0%, much better than negative 0.16. And economy, economically speaking, our growth is actually only now negative 0.238%, with a yearly surplus. So we're doing all right. Not great, but we're doing quite a bit better than we were earlier, even though we still have negative growth. Which means we're just declining. Whatever. You know, things happen. And happy February, everybody. <clears throat> you can see minus 0.356 on the screen right there. Not good. Still same yearly surplus, which is... Not bad. Really not bad. The fourth estate, though. Bloody heck, that was close, David Perry Jones. Uh, saw with a little relief. Five more seconds and I would have missed the bus. Struggling to catch his breath, he handed his ticket over to the conductor and sat down, looking at the combusting streets of Cardiff outside. Cars of all makes, pedestrians of all stages of irritation, and shops of all sizes made up the vibrant play he had for his seats, too. His mind was focused on things, other things, however. Breaking through the loud sounds of the bus's engine, the city itself was an uncertainty, which stabbed right into his heart like a needle. It was his first day in the newly founded WBC and got quite possibly the most stressful job in the entire bloody establishment, presenting it a live news program. <clears throat> While Dave was no stranger to journalism, his rugby commentary has won him a fair bit of respect and popularity among those who cared about such things. This job was wildly different. That's one thing to com uh, commentate. A rugby match and a radio broadcast, but another thing entirely present the news on live TV where body language, clarity, and confidence is paramount. No more comfortable radio booths and pure voice work for him, he thought. 
WBC's newest employee would continue on drowning himself in anxiety and excitement, perhaps if not for the conductor's loud announcement of the WBC studio station. The shout ripped David out of his thoughts, making him stand right up and jump right up out of the bus in a manner of someone called terribly impolite. He had no time for politeness, though, as he looked at his watch, he realized that the time for his broadcast was fast approaching. Swimming straight into the lobby, he hung his coat and headed straight for the studio. After only the tiniest amount of last minute literally prep work, it was planted firmly in the presenter's chair. On breaking new era in Welsh media with a good morning, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to warmly welcome you to Wales today, the WBC's premier news program. You should really start waking up sooner. Grand I should do it too. I should go to sleep sooner and wake up sooner. Um Welsh broadcasting channel, more stability and political power. Nice. And we're gonna keep going for that one too, but Ending working toil. Previous Labour Commission reports, especially during the Plague Cymru's period of dominance, have painted a grim picture of Welsh working conditions. Labours were found to be suffering from back pain, light and heavy injuries, and other physical ailments caused by overworking and insufficient safety regulations, not to mention the psychological effects of toxic and unsafe working environments. This year we'll see another report being submitted to the government. May be the best one yet. And actually, we're going to keep doing this one just because we can. And it gives us more, like GDP, like 1.7. We were like less than 1 billion here. And that's roughly mirroring southern Wales, so. We're balancing out both part of Wales here, which is actually pretty nice. So now we're 0.15. Oh, we were so close. 0.12. Still one is 0.34. But poverty is getting worse. Crap. Huh. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's not good. But now we get over two political power a day. And it's pretty decent. I'd say that's pretty darn decent. Yep, there goes Greece. Ah, Germany exploded. Oh, man. Uh, someday, Wales will be removed from TNO, and we will be ready for that day. Well, it looks like Himmler's not doing very well, either. Oh, poor Himmler. <clears throat> and you face the rule. But a contentious vote. The assembly was abuzz with anger. Shouting matches between the plague, played and Goh could be heard even on the street, destroying Cardiff's relaxed early morning atmosphere. Are you mad you want the economy to shrivel up and die? Because that's what's going to happen if you get your way, you bloody reds. This is for the good of the people you gosh darn reaction is. Traitor, idiot, exploiter, commie. These and many, many significantly more colorful epithets filled the air as good old Wales Parliament and devolved into a verbal battlefield. The occasional moderate proposer of the dialogue and understanding was quickly shot down by more passionate MPs who were several magnitudes louder than their more cool headed colleagues. <coughs> Some parliamentarians, when faced with the possibility of loss in debate, let their fists do the talking for them and had to be escorted out of the building. Prime Minister Emery's observed the hall with a mixture of disbelief, sadness, irritation, and amusement. He knew that the bill would be controversial, but didn't quite anticipate such a radical response. His thoughts drifted into the questions of why am I here and what led us to this point before he was taken out of it by the sound of a hammer hitting a wooden desk and a stern voice shouting, Olda, Olda, I will have Olda. That seemed to call the fires uh, burning in the assembly as it suddenly became quiet. Embarrassed parliamentarians meekly came back to their seats, although they still eyed their rivals down with anger. Now we should continue with the, on with the vote, the assembly speaker said. The honorable sirs and madams would see fit to allow it. Of course, as expected, plague Cymru members unanimously opposed the bill with a Cymru go, and the Communist Party voted in its favor. The unionists and liberals ever on the sidelines of the politics abstained from voting. Uh, predictably, the workers' protection bill passed, and the played were outraged anyways. <clears throat> Wales, for nearly all of its history, has been a politically insignificant nation, subjugated by the Romans and later by the Britons. Our standing in the politics has been one of a vassal, always at our disadvantage. Even after the restoration of our independence following the Second World War, our status was low and no measures were taken to challenge that. Now, however, with the situation at home getting better and better every single day, <clears throat> we can turn our gaze outwards and use our domestic success to achieve our goals in the fields of international politics and wonder working Wales. Our economy is stronger than ever. Production is skyrocketing. New businesses are opening everywhere. Our population is increasing. And all without currently capitalism. The people are wealthy and happy, slowly forgetting about the tribulations of the past years. Already, Newton Hickman was stuck to our country and is gaining more and more popularity around the world. Wonder working whales. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice. Oh, the growth is getting worse. Of course, we keep selecting the options to make it worse, but whatever. Oh, African War? No one cares. This one, while we understand Wales won't be a diplomatic power for now, we can at least attempt some improvements to the foreign policy region. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'll do this one last because that's going to hurt our political power gain quite a bit, so. Even we'll get more there, but whatever. Gain Holder's content, huh? Keeping Holder content. After the shameful defeat Great Britain suffered at the hands of Nazi Germany, the cursed fascists installed a military garrison in Cornwall <clears throat> in order to better oversee the situation of the rotting puppet, the Kingdom of England. Well, hold nothing but contempt for the fascist murders and oppressors, and would like to see their complete removal from the Isles. Considering the circumstances, we must abide by the principles of real politique. A diplomatic mission must be sent to the garrison commander, Franz Halder, to ensure him of our good intentions towards Germany. A lie, of course, but a necessary one. <coughs> the report. 
Oh, uh, Labor Commission report of the Ministry of uh, Labor. Preliminary workplace reports optimistic. Introductions of WWPB are proceeding smoothly, despite minor protests from employers. New protective equipment is steadily being introduced into the most hazardous industries. Reduction of overtime work and increased break times, leading to decreased demand for medical care amongst employees. New safety regulations casual, but drastic drop in necessary medical interventions in workplaces in the last month. Dismissals of workers mostly caused by worker negligence and incompetence. Number of dismissals by others causes sharply dropping. <clears throat> Quick introduction of the bill created for averting a potential mining disaster in the Tower Colliery. Last month, another the coal mines uneventful. Uh, worker surveys organized by the commission show clear and overwhelming support and appreciation for the bill, with 82% of those surveyed considering the WWPB to have a positive effect on the well-being at work. 40% being neutral, only 4% considering to be unnecessary and or harmful to the overall labor situation in Wales. Complete an introduction of the bill is expected to be achieved in two to four months, depending on the level of employer cooperation or allocated budget. This is great and all, but how many addendums does this thing really need? The ugly truth. Emery's Thomas down the Prime Minister's office his face buried in his hands. An antique clock the size of a small wardrobe stuck, struck 11 in the evening. Its loud noise piercing through the statesman's skull like a needle. Slowly, he picked up a cup of coffee long since gone cold and he had to stay because he had needed it to stay awake. On the desk lie the cause of his sorry state, a report from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It painted a picture most troubling. Talking of terrible people. From strings of arrests in England and considering reports from Burgundy, rumors of Hitler's advancing illness and instability in the East. The order which was created in Europe after the Second World War seemed to be crumbling. The end of German hegemony was in bad news, but the fate of Europe after the fall of the Reich and all the uncertainty it brought terrified Emery's. Who could guarantee that nothing more than more monstrous would arise from the ashes? Who could guarantee that it wouldn't reach Wales this time as well? The truth was nobody, not Wales, not the Cymru go, and not the Prime Minister Thomas was ready for war. Appeasement. That was needed for appeasement of both friend and foe. Wales needed to toe the line between the OF Ben and the Germans. Or else destruction. Wales will probably consider it cowardice, even betrayal maybe, but it had to be done. They will understand, of course, in time, as they're still going to continue doing keeping hot of their... Hold uh, content. Ignore Scottish complaints. Throw out local complaints. Um. Keep the refreshing minimal. Uh, they're not too thrilled. Silence is a better option. Well, you know what? Let's go with uh, throw out local complaints. And even worse situations have arisen. Although we can simply ignore the Scots, we cannot ignore the cries and criticism of our people, especially if they are morally justified. So there's no place for morals in dealing with the Germans, and our citizens must accept that fact. Keep the repression minimal. Or ignore the Scottish complaints. As expected, the Scots aren't too thrilled about us or affirming our relations with the Germans. The government has issued an official diplomatic protest against our actions, barely stopping short of calling us fascist collaborators. As much as we have regret to call it making that decision, we stand by it, and for that, the protest must be ignored. Sometimes silence is a better option. Um, the Battle of Cathedral Road. I don't know which one I want to do. You know, I don't want to lose political power, so... But stability is even worse to lose, so... The government has betrayed our trust. Thomas is a spineless coward, resigning no reconciliation with the fascist murderers. The workers will not stand for this humiliation. These were the signs, written in both Welsh and English, carried by the protesters as they marched through the Cathedral Road in Cardiff. Red and black banners, floating in the wind, betrayed the participation of the Communist Party and trade unions in their march. The terribly loud crowds slowly walked towards the riot police line set up by the end of the road. The protesters stopped a short distance from the policemen, with only a couple of organizers keeping the outraged men and women in check. The police have betrayed the people. Stand out and join us, comrades. If you aren't with us, then you're traitors. Suddenly, a rock flew over the protesters' head and bounced off the riot shield. More followed, accompanied by bottles, pieces of wood, shards of glass, and other projectiles. The police held the line, and riot shields shaft, chattered under this constant barrage. Until they had enough, wooden bullets were shot, incapacitating some protesters and shocking others. The line, the line slowly advanced, shields up before breaking out into all out charge. The riots weren't so easily dismayed, however, and a brutal melee fought, uh, broke out. 58 wounded, good god. Agantagonize the English, of course. The English of the East, the East have long oppressed our nation, conquering and exploiting it for their own imperialist gains. The mismanagement and ill will have cost us much and kept us behind in development in all spheres. There can be no friendship between us. The message most unpleasant. Mr. Prime Minister, a message from the Scottish Embassy. The Secretary of Barge into Thomas' office, nearly knocking over a pot, uh, saying near the door. I don't know what it's about, but it looks very important. Before Emery could react, a slow, a closed envelope landed on his desk, and the Secretary was gone. He opened the envelope, and even before he started reading, he felt that he knew exactly what the message was about. And he was right. The Scottish Republic officially protests the restoration of diplomatic relations between the Welsh Republic and the Greater German Reich. Such an action puts all the owls in danger and raises the question, what will come next? A non-aggression pact, an alliance, a stationing of German troops on Welsh soil? We implore the Welsh government to reverse its diplomatic course or face the possibility of Scottish diplomatic and economic hostility. Emery's put down the letter, grabbed his head in frustration, buried his face in his hands and muttered, bloody Scotsman. Can't they see that we w can't back down now? Especially, I mean, it's one thing if, uh, that would get acceptable, nice. Yeah, this actually gives us what? A lot more stability, actually, too. Um, the, the Himmler lost. Scots, you failed. Rab Butler, huh? 
for now. No chance, Mac, huh? Look at that. We actually have some growth, finally. And we're cutting down the debt, which is... I can't ask for more than that, really. No, well, actually, I can. I can ask for a better uh, poverty rate change. But, hey, it's still, it's still doing really well. Uh, not bad. Which is a, well, fine, why I'm fine with that, too. Of course, right here, we have 2.21 billion state GDP. Well, this one has 2.47, so not bad. Across the Irish Sea is our trade partner. Germany is a monster devouring Europe and leaving it to rot in its innards, and the antithesis to all we hold dear and sacred, and yet we find ourselves at its mercy. The German economy, however weakened, is a behemoth towering over us, one which could squash us beneath its feet if it wanted to. The only reasonable course of action at the moment is economic cooperation and appeasement, unless we find ourselves fighting a financial war we, of course, cannot win. As though I love spending time on this page. But sometimes we gotta look at technology too. So we're at 1.404. Is it going up or down? Slightly more up. Our debt to GDP ratio is 71%. National debt 3.332. Um, still same here. Not bad. And we still get over two a day, which is just fantastic. Fantastic. And there's market capitalism. Free market capitalism, of course. Three point three three two, and then this one here is twenty three point six three. Oh, there goes uh, Kennedy. Goodbye. Oh, and we've more here. Oh, I didn't realize how much we had down here actually too. Comrie um beef beef. Oh, second look at coal. Uh oh, above the hills. Oh wow. Good minimum wage, huh? Sheep in the valley. Oh good God. <clears throat> Half a billion. Northern Wales now has more in state GDP than southern Wales. Nice job. Across the Irish Sea, though. Ireland, like Celtic brother nation, has experienced a story much like our own. One of subjugation, mistreatment, and oppression at the hands of the dastardly of the English now it presents a golden opportunity. Treating cooperation across the sea. International friendship and cold, hard capital awaits. Do we just do this just to suffer? You lose... Income, we get more pop, uh, political power, but still. Agricultural experts. Good God. A sustainable economy? Doesn't seem very sustainable, but we'll roll with it for now. <clears throat> Throwing the non believers. United left. Restoring a diplomatic reputation. Oh, uh oh. Preparing for the election? Talks with Scotland. On the Isles. Oh boy. Preparing for the worst. Well, the dragon emerges, I guess. After this one, of course. With renewing, improving, and strengthening our international relations in the region, we have secured a safe, solid place for Wales in the political scene. New friends were made, of course. Threats neutralized and attitudes clarified. We no longer have to fear what tomorrow may bring, for only an unprecedented cataclysm could shake up the accords and treaty signed. <clears throat> Can we on Beth after we read about the German question? Where are we at for this stuff, too? 55% is not bad. That's pretty good. Let's not be so hasty as it stands. The Reich is a real threat to us, not to the Isles, to all of Europe. We can't simply give them the finger and tell them to piss off. While they'll probably be quite pissed off by the situation themselves. What you're proposing is bold to the point of madness. We have to stay out of the course of peace ever so slightly and we'll be fine. A real threat? Are you joking? Germany's dying right before our very eyes. It's shoulder deep in its own excrement. Part of my words and about a choke on it. We don't need it, and judging by how things are going, it's more likely to hang itself and punish us for the so-called insolence. It's time to throw the Germans out. Are you both mad? I have forgotten about the war, about its outcome. We are the smallest nation on the Isles, and Germany is a victor of the greatest war in human, humanity's history. This isn't a diplomatic game between us, e between equals. This is equivalent of a beggar talking with a king. For our own sake, we should deepen ties with Germany. We cannot risk war coming to Wales, not yet. <clears throat> the debate continued throughout the night. A curious and polite language often thrown away, or language long since thrown away in favor of blunt honesty. Raymond Williams' belligerent stance lost force as quickly as it gained them, with only two options remaining. Holding a status quo, and Nicholas A. Glaces appeasement. After such much deliberation, the government decided to stay the course. Increase cooperation. Oh. I'm going to see what happens with stay the course. Stay the course. Dragon emerges, of course. And then come around back. Fifth. 
Our time as a government of Wales will be forever remembered as one of the brightest points in our nation's history. People are wealthier, happier, and safer than ever. Our economy is booming, and international position is safe and secure. And democracy serves as a beacon of hope on the continent strengthened strength held by fascism. The property of Cymru have shown their mettle once again, proving that nothing can break the spirit of the Welshman. Media representation. <clears throat> The media in our country are always loyal to the establishment, protecting and downplaying the failures of Plague Comrie. That's going to continue. Pluralism in the media must be guaranteed, and other parties must be allowed to be in the spotlight. The old guard won't be too keen on this idea, however. <clears throat> and the problems are almost guaranteed to arise. There's always going to be problems, aren't there? 5.2 billion is not bad, though. That's really not too bad. Food um, tank would be very nice. I like doing this one the most because it just gives you more, it's just straight up more GDP. 0.19 is not bad. 1.6% growth, not bad too. 68, 3.55, which is worse than earlier. But the kind of is growing fast enough that I'm not super, super duper, 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 duper concerned about it too much. So, should be okay still. Uh, what's that one too? This one, 2.47. 2.72 across our sea. The dragon emerges, of course. And then civic nationalism. Ireland accepts. They actually accepted our offer. Our embassy in Dublin has received the response and forwarded it to us. It reads as follows The Republic of Ireland officially accepts the offer of economic cooperation between it and the Welsh Republic. Our market shall be open and wide for any Welsh investment and vice versa. We hope that this partnership will be fruitful and lucrative one. This has caused quite a commotion in the governmental offices with employees hectically scrambling to notify invested investors or interested investors. The Prime Minister's open economic endeavor has paid off. Nice. The newly achieved independence of our country has led to a drastic increase in ethnic nationalism, most visibly expressed in the form of the Free Wales Army. While we love our land and treasure its independence, we believe that it belongs to all of our countrymen, not just those who are ethnically and linguistically Welsh. For the love of Wales must be based on a set of shared values and loyalty to our democratic institutions, not blind ethno-nationalism. No democracy without representation. The Assembly is convened today to discuss the passing of the media legislation proposed by the ruling Cymru Go party. According to the party spokesman, of course, uh, Wynne Samuel, the new law is supposed to guarantee fair and equal media representation of all political parties in Wales. The bill passed after two hours of loudly debate, thanks to the votes of Cymru Go and the Communist Party MPs, although key PC leaders issued an official statement denouncing the bill. Voicing concerns over governmental interference in the media market and potential minimizing or slander of the parliamentary faction. Gwyneth for Evans, former Minister of Finance in the played Cymru government, delivered a short protestatory speech after the vote had passed. Leave the free market alone. All you socialists and communists want to do is regulate, regulate, regulate once again. When it comes to media, the market itself is the best form of regulation. All this legislation do is force journalists to spew socialist propaganda and discredit the plague Cymru. I cannot change a democratic process, but I cannot trust your government either. This is nothing more than a prelude to a red dictatorship. Government officials have dismissed the claims in the speech and tried to calm the opposition, but the opinion of the bill is still overwhelmingly negative among the plague, replied Cymru. Our intentions are noble. Cool. Welsh democracy. Our political reforms have paid off. Welsh democracy is stronger and healthier than ever before. Pluralism and freedom are legally guaranteed. And, <clears throat> surprisingly civil. Or at least the political discourse is remarkably surprisingly civil. Our work is not yet done, however. The questions of the economy remain uh, as well as society. Where'd you get okay, more political power, which is good. Of course, we lost oh, basically 0.3 political power, which sucks. But at the same time, we're doing alright. You know, it could be worse. 0.28, I mean, that's, that's pretty darn good. 1.7% real growth versus... And this stuff here, and then negative one, or I guess it's going be positive, but going down by 0.18, not bad. Minority rights. Well, I guess we believe minority rights here. At least for now. You never know. Maybe it'll change. And almost there. We've got three days left. Three big boy days left. And no one more left. Welsh democracy. Of course, I already read earlier about uh, this one, but I didn't look at coal. Honestly, if we go down this path, we've got to rush through a lot of the stuff here. United left. Um, what are the hills? Yeah, we'll probably just rush through all this stuff down here first. I think that'd be for the best. Let's see right now. Where are we at here? Almost 3 billion in state GDP versus 3.23. That ain't bad, man. That ain't too shabby. Look at that. Oh, so good. 4.181. I'll keep making it minimal as much as possible. Just directly increasing GDP seems kind of unheard of, but you know what? Whatever. Whatever. Better anti tank, which would be good. Of course, it's 1965, so we can grab more industrial stuff here. I'm in buildings, outposts. Let's get more output first. That'd probably be really good for us. What else? Democracy. Democracy? It is full of democracy. Let's see. Expenditures. Well, it's roughly equal for the military as well as civilian spending. 
Which is kind of surprising because we have only two divisions right now. RFK has been elected. I need to play as RFK again. I need to play as George Wallace again. I really need to play a George Wallace campaign. I love George Wallace. He's so much fun. Such a cool guy. A real gamer. Hmm. Five days off, though. Yeah, more political power was always nice. Yeah. Yeah, nationalized stuff. I always nationalize everything. Everything's nationalized. The nation of Wales is nationalized at this point, too. So. Cool. Alright. And restoring your diplomatic reputation. Well. Overlooking to the seas. Mission to the USA. Well, let's do a second look at coal. Our coal reserves are the most important feature of our economy and one of the few reasons our economic significance. <clears throat> In the past couple of years, this extraction was performed without regard for the health and well-being of our workers and environment. I almost said soldiers. Now, however, we must take a second look at it, and at least at the issue, in order to guarantee ethical and sustainable coal extraction. It's got to be sustainable, man. Got to be sustainable. I was come back over here and not make it sure that we're not sustainable at all. 1.88. Still not bad. 4.2. Not great. Growth has gone down a little bit more, as well as surplus, which does kind of suck too, but whatever. Yeah. Surplus point three three is not bad, but we could always use more. Can we not? Yes, we can. How are we doing actually over here? Um, we're going to buy five a month, which is good, 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 acceptable. Let's give us now. Oh, we can't go any higher. Darn it, that sucks. Yeah, four point two percent. Yeah, it's all right. That's point one eight. Yeah, second look at coal is the thing to do. Actually, we haven't even really invested in the infrastructure here either. But growth is much better. Earlier it was just negative all the time. And being negative all the time doesn't really pay off for anybody. Whale, strong, free. Yes. Let's take a look at coal, though. With work to be done. Who needed growth or income? Whale, strong, and free. Emery is on the assembly balcony, sipping some champagne, listening to the muted sounds of the celebratory party inside and looking down on the busy city below. Cardiff had grown quite the beauty, thought, as he took in the cool evening air. Not just Cardiff, he added, the entirety of Wales. He's seen it firsthand, happy workers offering how, like our heartfelt thanks and promises of support. Thousands of new cars brought here by the ever-increasing prosperity of the people. He read the announcements of the newspapers of the labor unions. He heard it from his own ministers. Of course, it wasn't perfect. Things had to be done to secure this new order. Things he would have found repulsive otherwise. And for all of his efforts, he couldn't possibly be right every couldn't right every wrong and injustice. But that was important at the moment, at least for Wales, finally true and free. Work to be done. Another cold and dreary day in Cardiff. Normal for most. For most, this day would seem like any other wet and dull dairy dull dairy day. Uh, a man walks his dog, a woman strolls home with the groceries, yet despite this monotonous backdrop inside the government buildings and something not at all as insignificant is happening. An idea long discussed, now finally set in motion, the creation of a team to oversee dealings with the coal industry. The Industrial Reform Committee will be the government's platform for ethically or ethically dealing with the coal industry and the myriad of related organizations. The focus of the newly birthed IRC's opening moves is quite straightforward, the multitudinous unions in the many fields of the coal industry. The only way for the government to achieve its goal of weakening this almost all-powerful industry is dependent on the support of these unions. From there, it's simpler. The Welsh economy must be free from the death grip of the sinking coal industry before it drags the whole economy under. In doing so, the industry must be weakened by opening other industries to loosen the hold of coal. Before that, any of that can be achieved, the unions must be convinced to support the government above the hills. The working conditions of miners have long gone, gone a long way from the frequent cave-ins, explosions, and overworking and injuries characteristic of the 19th century, but they're still quite poor. As part of the coal plan, we've drafted a massive campaign of reforms across the mining sector, improving safety, pay, efficiency, and access to medical care. Implementing these ideas will not be cheap or no easy or quick, but the long-term benefits will be immense, which uh, is not bad. Nice. You know, the hospital, you get a hospital too. Nice. But before we go on, we got to convince the unions. Our government has long supported the trade unions of our country, increasing their rights and privileges in accordance to our sincerest beliefs. Through these efforts, we've built up significant goodwill with them, and now it's time to capitalize on it. What good is our coal plan if the workers do not consent? Who needs consent? Northern Wales is getting more GDP, because right now we're $4 billion down here, and 3.72, which is awesome, 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 awesome. 7.75 billion versus how much? Quite a bit. Goring is, oh god, winning. Oh, that's not good. Um, convincing the unions, of course. But then, uh, a national debate. With the creation of the Welsh Broadcasting Channel, many people in Wales have recently become much more interested in politics. Some have recently petitioned the station to broadcast a national debate with the country's leading political figures, and parties in a debate which will, 
which the Welsh Broadcasting Channel accepted, along with politicians willing to join in representation of their ideologies. The representatives include the Cymru Go, which is currently in the government, and the Communist Party, the Welsh Liberal Party, representative of the independent net unionists, and Plaid Cymru, which used to dominate on uh, Welsh politics post-independence. Already the nation has been anxious to see this debate air, and some have even started be betting who would win the debate. Ooh, exciting. Sheeps in the Valley? Yeah, we definitely got to do that one. Um, as part of urban workers, we have focused our platform on the betterment of the situation. The attention we gave to the industrialized and mining de dependent regions of the country have sadly marginalized our agricultural sector and alienated many farmers. Such a move was a terrible mistake and one we must and will remedy. The independent unions have won the debate. The more things change and announced or said quietly as the screen lit up, the more they say the same. The screen sh shown, showing the independent unions as winning the debate poll. It seems against all odds of the pro-independence parties, the unions have won, with the claims of Welsh independence annihilating the Welsh economy and causing crashes to both the local stability and well-being of the people. It seems the pro-unionism speech did not go unnoticed, and they continue to compare the horrid life of today to the glory days of when Wales was part of the Grand Empire. They bash the Cymru Go as creating an ineffective socialist regime in Wales, the Liberals were not touched as much, but still criticized as accepting Welsh independence, the Communists as a disgusting force that will attempt to force Wales and Britain to bow down to the evils of communism, and furious yelling towards the representatives of Plaid Cymru, were attributed with granting Wales its independence, which led to misrule and horrid consequences almost 20 years later. As Unionists celebrate the return of a sense of British unity, it seems that the nation's sovereignty is being questioned. Unionism? Things are getting interesting. Of course, she in the valley, of course. Um, yeah. Focus on the forgotten. Our country, although small, uh, sports disparities in development reminiscent of the far larger nations. Many regions lag behind mostly due to governmental failures. We must shift our focus to these regions directing both public and private investments and building up infrastructure. A dragon in the heart. Our trade with the Irish has paid off immensely. Good. Uh, through shrewd diplomacy and economic aptitude, we have forged a friendship with, uh, which is not only very lucrative, but also brought our country together and led to greater social and cultural understanding. While migration between our countries is mostly limited to upper class individuals crossing the Irish Sea and there and back again in order to conduct business, the free flow of trade caused by the agreement has caused an extreme spike in interest in our Irish culture. Both contemporary and historical, homes and libraries are getting filled with Irish books and legends while our Irish, or are these Irish inspired pubs, pop up everywhere in our, in our cities? Inner cities. The same has apparently happened in Ireland with the Welsh paintings, songs, and literature finding an ever-expanding soon to be mainstream, if our annals are to be trusted, niche. Who could have thought that a simple trade agreement would do so much good? And of course, like this one earlier, of course, and agricultural exports too. Our agricultural output has increased to the point of a surplus. Money from exporting the surplus is already filling our carvers, money we can invest into further developing the country. The economy has been successfully diversified, and we are no longer totally dependent on coal and steel, which would be great. Great? Great. Inflation will decrease? Ooh! Offering more steelworks. Despite a radical improvement in the safety in the mining sector, coal mines continue to be dangerous, uh, mostly due to coal bed methane, and taxing working environments, both physically and mentally. In order to provide employment for workers unsuitable for mining and increased steel production, the Ministry of Economy has prepared a steel work expansion plan, the main objective of which is the building of new steel mills and the modernization and expansion of existing ones. All we need now is a green light from the Prime Minister, which would be a good thing to happen. So, keep in the valley meeting with the unions. Now, the Welsh government is to achieve its goal of prying free, uh, Wales free from the choke hold that requires support from two different sources. Getting the people of Wales on board should be easy, a mass propaganda campaign should do the trick. Getting the coal industry unions to support the government, however, is nowhere near as simple. After all, the, the men these unions represent demand, depend on the coal industry for their livelihoods. A man who has mined his whole life cannot easily find another occupation. The IRC must tread lightly around the unions. This meeting with the biggest players and most influential unions is the first move. Well, that wasn't so bad, Davies remarked as he leaves the meeting with the union leaders, as fellow committee members filing out after him. I think we've convinced a few of them. Convinced? They were walking out halfway through. Yes, but those are radicals, extremists. They would have never agreed to anything we had to say anyway. It's better that they leave now so that we know who we can actually work with. I'm certain that the rest will support our plan, either immediately or with some concessions and a little persuasion. I hope you're right, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and we'll see you tomorrow as we'll see what else we have in store for the Cymru Go as Wales. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.